That would be the Netherlands, the United States with John Cappell, Bernard Williams, Darvis Patton, and J.J. Johnson heavily favored. They had the best qualification time. The U.S. has an interesting history in this event. They either win it or they don't qualify for the final. They've won it six times. Twice Canada has won it. The two times the Canadian team won, the Americans did not qualify for the final as the result of bad baton exchanges. But they don't have their top team really in this event. Based on time, the world record holder Tim Montgomery has headed home. Maurice Green is injured. So it's a different U.S. team, Steve. Well, I think they have to adopt a different policy. Instead of putting their second string runners in, they haven't had the luxury to do that. And uh, now they've got their best team out in the heats and again in the semifinals. The Netherlands with the false start. They run in lane five. Jamaica's in one. Trinidad in two. Italy in three. Poland in four. The Netherlands in five. The United States in six. Japan in seven. And Ghana runs in lane eight. The second attempt at getting this first semifinal underway in the men's four by 100 meter relay. The top two, uh, top, uh, top three, pardon me, and the two fastest losers right. advance to the final. The United States away very quickly with John Cappell, the lead runner. Now the exchange on the back straight. The Americans make it cleanly. Bernard Williams running for the United States. And Bernard Williams will pass off. Darvis Patton running through the turn for the U.S. The final exchange, J.J. Johnson will bring it home. And the Americans come off the turn in the lead. The battle for second place. On the inside, it is Poland. And on the extreme inside, Jamaica. Jamaica gets there along with Poland. 38 seconds flat for the team from the USA. Jamaica and Poland also automatically qualify. Well, faster than the, uh, their first round, but only marginally so. But they're uh, pretty good with their changeovers. I think they've got to be very happy with that. That's the most important thing. There are Kitty's Hill, obviously, if they have any problems with that. But that looked pretty smooth all the way around. At a time of 38 seconds flat, only seven countries all time had ever run that. Of course, the Americans being one of them, number two ever, Canada. But 38 seconds is a very solid time, especially when you consider the likes of Green, Montgomery, Drummond are not in this race. The final exchange, all the Americans basically have to do is get solid exchanges. They don't have to be perfect in this qualifying round. They just have to be sound. And they do that very well coming across in a world leading time of 38 seconds flat. Jamaica finished in second place and Poland was third. Those three teams automatically move on. The Americans got off to a very good start. And you'll have to watch. This is an interesting view from top, a little bit out of perspective, but there's a 20 meter exchange zone from yellow line to yellow line. And there's an acceleration zone that the athletes get to use before they get into that 20 meter part of the track. Usually an athlete will take about 20 to 25 of his own footsteps as a marker to take off when the exchange runner is coming in. You can see the Americans start to accelerate and there in the yellow marks, is the zone that you get the chance to exchange and all the countries do a good, very good job of making the pass within that zone. The United States, Jamaica and Poland through to the final. And Canada hopes to be one of the teams automatically qualifying for the final. The first three of each heat plus the two fastest move on to the final. Canada running in lane two. It will be Charles Allen to Anson Henry. Jermaine Joseph will run the third leg and Pierre Brown is the anchor. There is the Canadian team running in lane two. Germany is in one. Brazil is in three. France in four. Great Britain with a very strong team of Kristen Malcolm, Darren Campbell, Marion Devonish, and Dwayne Chambers in five. Nigeria runs in lane six. Australia is in lane seven. And the Dominican Republic in lane eight. If they don't automatically qualify by being one of the top three, the time that the Canadians have to be concerned with if they are to advance the 38-6-3 posting by the Netherlands in the first semifinal. And the move by the Canadians to put Jermaine Joseph 
running that third leg. I think it's a smart move because Jermaine is a 200 meter specialist, so he knows the corner very well. He only has a personal best time of 10.39 in the 100 meters, but runs a world class 200 meter time at 20.48 seconds. So with a running start, Jermaine is a very competent athlete to run that third and final leg, passing it off to our fastest man in this four man field, Pierre Brown, with a personal best time of 10.13. So all these Canadians are primed and ready. It's very difficult to keep your focus this late in the now. championships. They've been waiting around. They're anxious to run, the run on this track. So again, Germany, Canada, Brazil, France, Great Britain, Nigeria, Australia, and the Dominican Republic. For Canada, Charles Allen, Anson Henry, Jermaine Joseph, and Pierre Brown. That's the running order. What? Great Britain off to a very good start. Charles Allen also gets out of the blocks very well. Coming up to the first exchange, going down the back straight. It's Great Britain leading the way for Canada. It is Anson Henry running the second leg. He'll be handing off to Jermaine Joseph in the top of the turn. Canada trying to be among the top three, and it's Great Britain coming off the turn on the inside. Brazil is beginning to make a move. Pierre Brown for Canada, trying to get up there to be an automatic qualifier in third place. It's going to be close. He's coming flying up, and as they dip in, no, just in fourth place, Great Britain winning 38-2-6, and we'll have to wait to see if the time of 38-6-3 can be bettered by Canada in a fourth place finish. Well, that was a good run from Great Britain Northern Ireland. Not as fast as the Americans in the first of these uh, semi finals, but it was all pretty close behind, so Canada may stand a chance. We'll have to wait and see. It could be preciously close. They did make it. Uh, no, pardon me, they did not. 38 6 6, 38 5 8, 38 6 3, the two times from the first heat that are better than the time run by the Canadian team a seasonal best clocking of 38 6 6 the Canadians unfortunately end up in ninth place they did a very good job from a tough lane lane two is always difficult the British were very solid all the way around just outside the Americans a time of 38 26 about three tenths of a second slower but it looked quite conservative actually through the exchange zones they just wanted to get through that final they knew they were the strongest of this semi-final. Nice clean exchanges, nothing too fancy. And when you're anchoring with Dwayne Chambers, if you get the baton in first place, you're gonna win. Here you can see that Charles Allen got off to a very good start. Anson Henry, once again, the longest leg of all these men. That back stretch is very hard to run. You can often tie up because you're running 110, 115, sometimes 120 meters. And Jermaine Joseph receives the baton very cleanly and runs a decent corner, not as, as well as you'd hope, but makes up a bit of ground, but Germany is making a move on the inside. And anchoring with Pierre Brown, our fastest man on the track, 10.13 seconds, does a very good job closing in, but just outside of qualifying, I believe Canada finishes in ninth place, a mere tenth of a second out of that final. Brazil, Nigeria automatically qualifying for the final, and Canada is out. Final number two, Canada, seasonal best, just three one hundredths of a second off qualifying through to the final. Uh, Jermaine Joseph, uh, obviously Glenroy Gilbert had a lot of confidence for good reason to put you on the corner in that second run. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a rough year as far as injuries or whatever, and he talked to me and I just said, you know, if my part is sitting on the sidelines, and cheering for these guys, and I'm willing to do that. If they need me, then I'm willing to do that as well, and they did. I ran as hard as I could. These guys ran as hard as we could, and I'm happy with it. What was the uh, reason for the switch, just to keep fresh? Um, well, this is the order we did at Commonwealth as well, and uh, so he was more comfortable with that. We, were more, we knew we had to change something, and I think the chemistry was between the three of us and Pierre might have been a little bit better. I don't know, it was Glenroy's decision. Men, uh, congratulations on representing your country well and uh, continued success. Thank you. Charles Allen, Pierre Brown, Anson Henry, and of course Jermaine Joseph.